Gone are the days of culling through hundreds of photos from a session manually. It's 2022 and we have AI for that. AI is taking over the world. Super select AI, new AI features, resize AI. Okay, lately I've been extremely fascinated with AI and what AI is capable of doing. So in this video, we're gonna be using AI to call a catalog of photos from a recent shoot I did. For those that don't know what calling is, it's actually the process of sorting through all your photos after a photo shoot or after a session and separating all the good photos with the ones that are bad the ones that you wanna edit and the ones that you don't wanna edit. This culling process can sometimes take hours and I know for me, it's one of the most daunting tasks when it comes to editing. Like, I know that if I had all the photos already selected for me and all I have to do is go in and edit, I'd be 10 times more motivated to edit. I recently stumbled across a software called Aftershoot and it uses AI to call your photos for you and it's extremely impressive. So let's dive into Aftershoot and show you what this can do. Okay, so we're in Aftershoot and you can see the albums that I've already tried with this software. You can actually see up here, it says we have helped you get two hours and seven minutes of your life back. And as you add more albums and you call more photos, that timer or that stat goes up. You can see this album alone saved me 56 minutes of my time. First thing you wanna do is click on new album. And this is how we're gonna get our photos into Aftershoot. We can either import from a folder on our computer or we can import directly off of a memory card. I would suggest importing from a folder already on my computer or like on an SSD just because it'll be faster than calling from the memory card. So we're gonna add our folder from the computer and we're just gonna grab raw photos here and click import from this folder. It shouldn't take too long to import the photos like it should be done in a couple seconds. Once the photos are imported into Aftershoot, we're gonna click on start culling. And this is where we're going to configure the AI or tell the AI what to do or how to handle our images. For all of our selects, we want the AI to give it the green color label and a five star rating. For highlights, we don't really care about highlights. For all of our duplicate photos, we want them to label it with the color yellow and a three star rating. Blurred, color red and a two star rating and all of our closed eye photos, the color purple with a one star rating. All these colors and star ratings you can change. So if we want our closed eyes to be the color teal, we can change it teal and then we can give it a different star rating. Now we're gonna tell the AI a little bit more information and how we want it to handle our photos. So for what type of shoot this is, we're gonna select portrait and headshots. Next is how we want the AI to determine what a blurred photo is. If you hover over any of these buttons, it actually gives you a little description of what strict is or what lenient is. And then it also gives you some photos to give you an example of what it means. So if we hover over strict, it says it has little tolerance for images that are slightly out of focus, which means if your photo is not tack sharp, it won't select it. If we go over to Lenient, you can see it selected three out of four of the photos, and some of them are a little bit out of focus, but the one that's extremely out of focus was the only one that wasn't selected. My tip for you is that if you're really trying to cut down on the amount of photos from a session, like you took 700 photos like me and you're trying to get it down to 30 or 40 of them, I would set everything to strict, which is basically every setting to the right. Next, we have our criteria for grouping duplicates. Grouping duplicates is a feature in Aftershoot that groups all of our duplicate photos or any photos that it thinks are duplicates, and then it'll choose one or two of those photos within that group as selects. So we have the setting identical on the far left and loose on the far right. And if we hover over identical, you can see that if a photo is not 100% identical, it will not group it or deem it as a duplicate. If we look at these four photos, there's really no big difference. The only difference is that his head is turned in every single one of the photos. He's still got the same smile. He's still got the same expression. The only thing that's different is his head is turned. Because his head is turned in every photo and there's not one photo that is identical to another, the AI treated everything as separate and didn't deem anything as duplicates. And loose is the complete opposite. You can see that it actually grouped all of those photos together. Personally, I think these are the same photos when the only difference is that his head turned a little bit. He's still got the same expression. He's still got the same smile. These are duplicates to me. I actually like the setting loose because if I'm shooting portraits, I don't want 
five to 10 photos that look all the same. I just want one photo or two photos out of that five or out of that 10 to deliver. I would also choose loose all the time because it's actually not that strict. Take a look at these photos that it didn't group together even though they all look pretty similar. Let's head back to our preferences and talk about selections in each duplicate set. This is going to tell the AI how many photos of a duplicate set is it going to choose as a select. You can see if we hover over more out of a group of four photos, it chose three of them. A group of four, it chose two for moderate and less is just one. So less chooses about 10% of images in a duplicate set and more is about 30%. Again, if you want to really cut down on the amount of photos, I would choose less. Amount of highlights, we're going to choose none, and that's because I actually don't really know what highlights are, so we're just going to skip that. Then we have the ability to enable and disable these features. So we can enable and disable close eyes, blur, duplicates, but we're going to leave all of these on, and we're just going to click on Start Culling. Culling doesn't take too long, however, it is hardware accelerated, so the program is actually using your CPU and GPU to make the process faster. So if you're on an old computer with not the best hardware, it could actually be a little slower and this works vice versa. That being said, I did run multiple tests culling the same album on my computer and it ran about four to five minutes to call everything. So if it does go past four to five minutes, it's most likely because the screen recording is slowing down the hardware. Now that culling is complete, you can see that it only took about five minutes to cull 701 photos. So you can see that out of 701 photos, it selected 243, which is more than half. And that's absolutely crazy. That saved me so much time than doing it myself. But 243 photos is still a lot of photos when I'm trying to get it down to around 30, 40. So there's a few more things we can do to cut that down. Unfortunately, I haven't found out how to run the AI on the newly called photos or if it's even possible. So that's where the spray can mode comes in. If we go up to the top here, you can see this little spray can icon here and we can click this to get into spray can mode. So I have mine configured like this. A left click will give a photo a five star rating with a green color label and a right click will give a photo no star rating with just the color yellow, which will basically just remove it from our selects. Now we can quickly just scroll through our photos and just remove some of these photos that we don't like from our selects. It makes it super easy to go through and call even more photos. Last time I did this, it took only three minutes to get from 230 selects to 40. Once you've gone through all your photos and remove some of the selects you don't want, all you have to do is click save changes. If we exit out spray cam mode, there's another thing we can do with our duplicates. So if we scroll down and we look at our photos here, and let's say this photo right here. This is actually a good photo. This is probably the one that I would choose out of our duplicates, but you can see all of our duplicates when we double click on the photo that the AI didn't choose and then the one that it did choose. So we can actually go through all of our duplicates and just click through them. You can see AI probably didn't choose this one because the glare on his glasses. We have our other ones here. They're all pretty similar, but AI chose this one and this is probably the one that I would choose or this one, but I think I like his expression better in this photo. Now let's say you don't like the photo it's selected and you want to choose the one beside it instead. All you have to do is click on the photo beside it and click the S key on your keyboard and it'll automatically swap that select to the new photo. Now another cool thing is if you have group photos, it'll actually detect everyone's face and make your selections based off of everyone in the group's face. So for example, if you're shooting family photos and the main subject in the middle has their eyes open, but everyone else has their eyes closed, the AI won't select that one. For example, you can see that here where Serena has her eyes open, but Yaz has hers closed. The AI did detect both of our faces, but it didn't select this photo. It actually threw it in our closed eyes filter scrapping the photo. Now this AI isn't perfect. It'll just get better over time. And that's just how AI is. Like that photo that I just showed you, I captured it because her eyes were closed. That was the point of the photo. 
but AI doesn't understand that. So when you're done coloring, I highly recommend going through all of your blurred photos and your closed eyes photos and just double checking that there's no photos that maybe you did want. And I literally just mean skimming through the photos really quickly. If the software helped you save an hour and a half worth of your time by culling the photos in five minutes, I'm sure you can spend another five minutes just scrolling through the photos to make sure that it didn't select any photos that you maybe want. To import these photos into your editing software, there's two ways to do it. You can export it from Aftershoot to Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, or Capture One. Or the other method, which I personally like, if you've already imported the photos into Lightroom, all you have to do is click on one of them, click Command A to select them all, and then click on the metadata menu at the very top and click on Read Metadata from Files. Click on Read. This should only take a couple seconds and you can see that it's automatically giving our photos those color labels and those star ratings. If you do this method, just make sure that the folder you imported into Lightroom is the same folder you imported into Aftershoot. Now this is all messy and a little bit hectic to work with. So in a program like Lightroom, all you have to do is click on Library Filter Metadata and then go over here and under our label, click on Green. And this will only show all of our selects. I can't tell you how excited I am to use this software for future shoots. We've seen AI being used a lot for the editing stages like masking and stuff like that, but nothing for culling a catalog, which I think is one of the most exhausting parts of the editing process. As a photographer who focuses on portraits and only shoots 200 photos a session, which is not that much, this is a huge help and a time saver. But I'm just thinking how useful this tool is for those wedding photographers that have to call through 5,000 plus photos from a wedding day. Like I know some wedding photographers that take a day, if not two days to call an entire wedding day. And to get it done in 10 minutes is just absolutely crazy. Anyway, with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are on AI. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.